gave for permission to himself and wife to leave the country. And the and a what it says here, I court denies request of my embattled assistant commissioner to leave country. Court air this part. The court airs of 240 charges pending against him. Let me read about. This is if you believe that the police is being unfair to you, the then police is being you unfair can to go me. to the police is being unfair to you. This car comes in front right? of me. So what this are you gonna do for me? Yeah, yeah, just turn around and continue your journey. You're listening to me now. Yeah, listen. If you believe what the police is doing this job, no, you're around, listening to what find I'm yourself to one of the complaints of Tarky and make allegation. I am Corporal Brown. Move your vehicle this time. If not, I will arrest you. No, I just want to move. Just want to Move your vehicle, please, sir. Thank you. But you're not crossing the bridge. The law will not stoop to you. you. Don't bow to me. To express their welcoming of these measures, particularly in relation to the announcement of a one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household in Guyana. Several persons, families, have indicated to my government the complications they foresee in the implementation of this much welcome benefit and the fear of being left, uh, left out. It is the understanding of this fear. It is the understanding of the complexity they raise, even within and among families. And on the- Get a clean, one, two years, the home and buy get it. The buy get um, track on it. So, but the track, the track is to this location. But he go down in the passageway, and when he go down in the passageway, the house downstairs, and the back, they um, go in the lock up in there, he knock in, they ain't coming out, he see him break down the door, and as soon as he open the door, shot fire, and the police shot, start shooting back. Sir Thomas ran two things that I'm telling you, apart from writing papers at the university. Globe Trust and that institution failed went into bankruptcy, he was heading that, the board. And Gaisuko, they put him to head Gaisuko and the APNU, and 7,000 people got sent home. Those are the two things that I'll judge you on, whether you can do things, not to write pieces of paper and make wild promises. Can you actually manage things? And so he had said something in the past. So I, I hope that... Um, Jason sent me this stuff. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. President Irfan Ali on Wednesday announced that instead of his initial $200,000 per household cash brand, every Guyanese citizen who would have attained the age of 18 years as of January 1, 2024 will be entitled to a $100,000 one-off grant. Ali said that the initiative is in keeping with the government's aim of increasing disposable income to create better opportunities and building prosperity for Guyanese. He said the initiative will also remove barriers to access and simplifying the administrative processes in the population's best interests. These analyses are critical to ensure the greatest impact and highest level of efficiency in the delivery of service. Over the past week, thousands of Guyanese have engaged myself and members of my cabinet providing extremely favorable feedback on the measures announced last Thursday and tens of thousands have publicly expressed their welcoming of these measures, particularly in relation to the announcement of a one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household in Guyana, President Ali said. Ensure the greatest impact and highest level of efficiency in the delivery of service. Over the past week, thousands of Guyanese have engaged myself and members of my cabinet, providing extremely favorable feedback on the measures announced last Thursday. And tens of thousands have publicly expressed their welcoming of these measures, particularly in relation to the announcement of a one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household in Guyana. Several persons, families, have indicated to my government the complications they foresee in the implementation of this much welcome benefit and the fear of being left, uh, left out. It is the understanding of this fear. It is the understanding of the complexity they raise, even within and among families. 
and understanding the importance of feedback that we have received, including included in the internal family conflict about access and distribution of the grant. We have seen in recent days a rush to transfer registration of utility meters and a rush to prepare tenancy agreements, all of which is aimed at establishing a distinct household as well as other complications that may arise in administering, administering these benefits. Having regard to these challenges, whether real or perceived, I instructed last Friday that this measure be re-examined with the aim of expanding the benefit while removing the challenges previously highlighted. I further ask that this reconsideration be guided by the following key principles. One, reducing the burden of administering the benefit. Two, simplifying the procedures for accessing the benefit. Three, improving ease of verification. Four, minimizing any potential conflicts that may arise, whether within the family or in the community. Five, ensuring an open, transparent, but verifiable system of delivery. And six, expansion of the benefit. In addition, of paramount importance was ensuring equitable distribution amongst and within households and across the population at large. In keeping with the above important tenets of this People's Progressive Party civic government that I have the privilege of leading, I wish now to announce that instead of the one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household previously announced, my government will now expand this benefit by providing a one-off cash grant of $100,000 to every citizen of Guyana 18 years and above as of the 1st of January 2024. With a simple means of verification, being possession of a national ballot identification card and or a valid passport. So, fellow Guyanese, this measure is now aimed at reducing the risk, the complexities, the conflict that were previously alluded to by citizens in their outreach to the cabinet and in my personal engagement. Of course, this new measure of transferring $100,000 to every Guyanese 18 years and above, and 18 years and, and above at a qualifying date of the 1st of January 2024, will cost well in excess of the $60 billion previously allocated for the one-off household grant. However, in the interest of fairness, openness, in the interest of ensuring the widest possible benefit is given to the Guyanese population, we believe that this is the best course of action. And as a responsible government, as a government that understands that we have a responsibility to ensure all feel included and part of the system, it is important that we build a system that is robust in delivering this grant. And the simplest way, most verifiable way, was $100,000 for every Guyanese 18 years and above with a qualifying date of the 1st of January 2024. 2024. That is achieving the age of 18 on or before the 1st of January 2024. And every Guyanese with a valid identification card and or a passport will be the beneficiary of this benefit and your means of verification is simply your valid ID card or your valid passport. This also addresses the many concerns by young people who may not yet have a family but who thought in their discourse with us that they will not benefit from the household allocation because they were not yet 
the head of the household. This new initiative will now take into consideration those persons and expand the benefit. Every adult that's 18 and above getting 100,000. And I want you to tell the president I come in for me own because I'm a born Guyanese. I hope he cater for we Americans that come over here because we wasn't getting good job and good money and now money given away and we have a share over there. Anyways, either there or there. I come to talk to my people then. Yeah. You see that 100,000 now what y'all about to get? I know it's not enough money. It's 500 USD. And some of y'all making that in y'all salary. So I know it's not enough money. But it's money that y'all didn't plan for. So since the money come in and y'all didn't plan for it, please invest it. Don't worry with the courting for Christmas. Don't worry with the painting up the house for Christmas. Don't worry with the whole heap of beef cook up and ax tail and them thing there for Christmas. And pepper pot. If you was planning to have egg pepper pot, still have your egg pepper pot and use the money and invest it. Look up what, what shares you could buy and invest it. You got DDL, you got banks, DIH, you got all kind of shares. Look it up and see how you can invest that money to multiply it to make it more than 500 USD, okay? Open a business, do a little thing, flip it, do something. But don't go and spend the money while, while, while I buy a set of, sc you know what I mean. I excited for my Guyanese people. I know it's not enough money, but I hope in future years, y'all will be able to get more money. As a matter of fact, I think instead of the government giving away money, they should really invest in healthcare because the healthcare really sucks in Guyana and y'all deserve to have great healthcare. Some people claim cash transfer. You know, they have no any idea now, as we said, the GT is their idea. The Linden Road was their idea, the paving, Linden Sous, like I did. To build a bro bridge in Wisma was their idea. Everything is their idea. But as I pointed out, it's a stupid thing to say that it's your idea to, to give tra cash transfer or to build, use gas to generate power. Any, any dunce would know that you have, if you have your own gas, you will use it to generate power and you get cheaper power. And then you can also get cooking gas and all of that rather than import expensive fuel to do it. What brain power do you need for to do that? What brain power? And I saw AFC went to complain and we didn't do any feasibility study. They went to Washington and the people laugh at them. It's a comedy show. Exim Bank did their own due diligence on the same thing they said we didn't do. The technical feasibility and financial feasibility and the, and the environmental uh, uh, studies. They did it separately and they found it's okay. And soon our document will go to the board of the Exim Bank. So you to go to complain to the U.S. government when they did their independent, their own consultants came and did this study and found that they're all, all of these things are okay on the project. So that's the clown show that AFC had in Washington. People laugh at them for this sort of thing. So everything is their idea. So they said, oh, now cash transfer is their idea. Since when that is a unique thing? It's in, in our manifesto from 2020, you see it here to Guyanese. And particularly some groups, we started off with the particular groups by our children, giving them more money first. We started off with the elderly, those with disabled. And now we're having cash transfer to a larger group of Ghanis. So it's not Clive Thomas. Clive Thomas has been a failure in everything he's done. Clive Thomas come up with $1 million. Anybody could call a figure without even looking at the economics of it. I can say tomorrow, 10 billion, you gotta give to every Ghanese. And it sounds good. Clive Thomas ran two things that I'm telling you, apart from writing papers at the university. Globe Trust and that institution failed, went into bankruptcy. He was heading that, the board. And Gaisuko, they put him to head Gaisuko and the APNU and 7,000 people got sent home. Those are the two things that I'll judge you on, whether you can do things, not to write pieces of paper and make wild promises. Can you actually manage things and so he had said something in the past so i i hope that um 
Jason sent me this stuff. He, I don't think he is sent. Oh, this is it, I think. Jordan did say that widespread cash transfers are unlikely to find favor. If it is a case where you say everybody in the population must get a transfer of cash and so on, I can tell you that will never fly. You hear? He just said if it is that everybody in the population would get a cash transfer, that will never fly. Jordan, the Minister of Finance, on the APNU, talking about this. And today, they're claiming credit for it. This is the Minister of Finance on record saying, if you're talking about uh, money for every person in Guyana, that will never fly, never fly. So that's their position. Today, they're claiming credit for it. So let me tell you now, let me come back to the cash transfer, having said all of this. So first of all, it's part of the PVP manifesto. Two, their track record is that in spite of all this gaffe now claiming that they want trust cash transfer and they want billions to go to people, the Minister of Finance said, if you're talking about cash to every person in Guyana, it will never fly. So we established what their position was. So, <clears throat> President Ali made the announcement and um, on Thursday last, 200,000 for every household in Guyana. By Friday morning and Friday afternoon, I did an interview with some reporters and if i said to them after the interview that we are reconsidering this but do not say anything as yet and i told them specific that's friday afternoon and the person who interviewed me can confirm this because i said please don't say anything this was friday afternoon because from Thursday, when the announcement was made, to Friday morning, we were bombarded with calls. So already, people from families were calling us to say, we will, if you give the one person in the family, we will never benefit from anything. These are within families. A woman called me and said, her husband works in the bush. Well, you know what I mean, in the interior. He came out at the census. His name is there as the head of the household. When he was here in the census, he gone back. He never gives her a cent. He heard about it Thursday. He said, you tell me when I'm coming coming to collect the money. He'd leave the interior, never give her a cent of money. He comes out and he goes back in there. And he wants to come out and collect the money. She said, if you give him this money, you'll nev I never see a cent for me and my children. But we'd never see a cent. He'd take it and go back in the interior. We have people who close to us. They said, people are coming to us. They heard about it tenancy agreements by friday afternoon the tenancy agreements everyone want to sign up a fake tenancy agreement because then you present your tenancy agreement after we would have used say electricity bill etc the primary household fake tenancy agreement we would have ended up with 500 maybe 600 thousand households the second one then we saw people starting going to GPL. They want new meters and all kinds of things. So for their own room, all kinds. Before Friday, we were, we realized that you couldn't count on the goodwill of people anymore. 
that they exercise because we want every person, every family to benefit, real family. But we would have ended up with controversy and a never ending issue to prove in a house how many persons were, you know, how many households you had. And this was Friday morning and Friday by Friday afternoon when I did that interview. So we told Finance Friday to start re-looking at the issue. I saw Jordan on Sunday. No doubt somebody from Finance told him we're reconsidering it. So Sunday he said, oh, give some, I suggest that you go to 100,000 now, as though it's an original idea. The same man who said it will never fly. You heard him. Will never fly under the afternoon, never get it. I suspect somebody told him that. The government is reconsidering it to change it now. He claims credit for it. Apnu is saying, we, it's our great idea. They are the idea now, you know. I don't give a damn about Apnu and their idea. For us, it's as the president said, we want this to be fair. We want to ensure that it's done transparently. We want to have an easy way of verifying people because now you have to prove who is the head of the household, not just whether there is a household, but who is the head of the household. So that is the conflict now. So even when you have proven that there is a household, people say, he's not the head of the household. I am, I just, I just supply more money than him. I just put in more money in the house. It's creating, it was creating problems even in the family themselves. The, the way and the president was gracious enough to accept and to agree to change the system. And now it may mean even a bit more money paid out because we may have more than 600,000 individuals. We're aiming for about 300,000 households. So we're at $200,000 each, that would have been 60 billion. But we may have more than 600,000 people. So it may mean a bit more money, but it will be an infinitely fairer system. And it avoids us, the government puts us in this unenviable position where we now have to prove who is the head of the household. And just imagine that will be never ending, never ending. And, may, and, and leave a lot of people dissatisfied. If every adult gets it now, that's a, we know who our adults are. We can prove who are adults and we can prove that they're Guyanese. And those are the two criteria, Guyanese and adult. Those are simple things to prove because we have documents to prove that and then we can pay people the money. So you can avoid duplication and all of that. Some people claim, you know, it's fairer too, because if you have larger households, they'll get more. But I know maybe single parents, it may, they may be affected a bit in the adverse way, but this was never intended as just for support for single parents. It was cash to help households. So they, it's a fairer system and we are we listen to people we look at the method we were using first we were going to use electricity bills and then look at the secondary household but it will be a total nightmare total nightmare it will end up in a lot of corruption and controversy if we go, try to determine households because even people who agreed that they were the head of the household in the census now change that they're changing that so, uh, I see them trying to take credit for this. Now, APNU is taking credit for something they said that will never happen under them. And Jordan is the worst one. He actually said, he was speaking as Minister of Finance, but he said it will never fly. Never fly. And made it look like it's alien to what, what we promised. It's here in our manifesto. We said it. It's consistent. But what you will find with us, it's not one or the other. We said all six areas will get attention. 
and we are focusing on long-term versus short-term benefits and that's holistic and we are tackling the i see i'm gonna deal with some of this oh the dutch disease three individuals have been remanded to prison on wednesday following an investigation into the alleged illegal landing of an aircraft and drug trafficking in Bashism village south rupanuni region 9. the incident reportedly took place on october 6 2024 with the suspects arrested on october 8. the defendants robin tain pig soto sereva a 48 year old brazilian miner from boa vista brazil hamlet da silva a 53 year old self-employed man from bonfin Brazil and a Chewood village and Evander Phoenix, a 27-year-old miner from a Chewood village, appeared before Principal Magistrate Faith Magusti at the Georgetown Magistrate's Court where the charges were read to them. Sarevo faced a charge of illegal entry to which he pleaded not guilty. He was also jointly charged with Da Silva with the offense of conspiring to traffic marijuana and cocaine at the said location. They both pleaded not guilty. Phoenix was similarly charged with conspiracy to traffic drugs and also pleaded not guilty. Attorney Bernard da Silva, representing the trio, applied for bail. He argued that Sareva's plane developed mechanical issues leading to a crash landing rather than an intentional act of illegal entry. On the day in question, the plane suffered damage. He further stressed that there were no narcotics found on his client or in the aircraft. Da Silva added that Sareva had no passport because he never intended to land anywhere, and insisted that Sareva posed no flight risk, having a friend in Guyana willing to act as a guarantor. Amid the disclosure that charges have been recommended in an SOCU probe of him, Assistant Police Commissioner Calvin Brutus yesterday moved to the court against the Attorney General, the top cop and others, arguing that he was being victimized in an ongoing investigation and being denied services including a restriction on his accounts. An application lodged for Brutus also alleges a role for Cabinet in his being sent on leave and recounted an appearance in court where he was threatened with a wanted bulletin if he did not show up at the Special Organized Crime Unit which is spearheading the probe. The affidavit also accused senior government officials of interference in the matter in what will likely create further turmoil in the Guyana Police Force. Assistant Commissioner of Police Calvin Brutus has filed a constitutional motion against the government of Guyana and several agencies. He has listed the Attorney General, Minister of Home Affairs, Police Service Commission, Commissioner of Police, and the Special Organized Crime Unit as the respondents to the various claims, injunctions, and orders being sought from the court. Brutus is among other things, claiming that there is political interference in SOCU's investigation of him, the states preventing him from accessing services at a number of state agencies in violation of his constitutional rights. The Police Service Commission unlawful act of not affording him a right of response before sending him on leave. The Home Affairs Ministry PS for unlawfully preventing him from taking overseas leave. The Commissioner of Police for acting unlawfully when he transferred him from the Office of Deputy Commissioner Administration. Also Minister of Home Affairs Rolson Ben instructing that he be sent on leave and the Cabinet's instruction to the Commissioner of Police to send him on leave. The constitutional motion is among several other matters filed today by Brutus in the High Court, which also named the Central Housing and Planning Authority, the Environmental Protection Agency and Guyana Geology and Mines Commission all of whom have reportedly either blocked him from doing business with their agencies or placed a stalemate on transactions which were already in motion. Assistant Commissioner Calvin Brutus is being represented by attorneys at Law Dominic Best, Earl Daniels and Yabrin Alikoff. This morning, I'm going to read the release from new source. This morning, Brutus appeared in court um, in pursuant of an application he made for permission to himself and wife to leave the country. And the and here what it says here, I court denies request of my embattled assistant commissioner to leave country. Court aired this part. The court airs of 240 charges pending against him. Let me read about. This is new source. You can read it for yourself. New source, Gordon Mosley, new source. I court denies request by embattled assistant commissioner to leave country. Court heirs of 240 charges pending against him. 240 charges. The article says embattled assistant commissioner of police Calvin Butas and his wife have been denied permission to leave the country by the I court. In making arguments against the request this morning, Deputy Solicitor General Shoshana Lal told Justice Gino Passad that there are 240 pending cases against Mr. Brutus in relation to financial crimes, and the state therefore is against the request. Brutus and his wife approached the court last week 
seeking permission to leave the country to accompany his wife to the United States on a medical medically related trip. In denying the request, the judge noted the seriousness of the allegations of financial crimes against the assistant commissioner and also noted that he had not applied to the permanent secretary seeking permission to leave the country. Mr. Brutus has been represented by attorney Earl Daniels. Two days ago, Brutus filed a separate matter against the government, the attorney general, the acting police commissioner, and the police service commission over the investigations that have been ongoing against him in relation to allegations of financial crime. That matter will come up in court. That matter is still to come up in court. Brutus in that application is claiming a, a tainted investigation and he's claiming us other things. But I'm not going to go into that because that is part of the sub substantive matter. But what I want to tell you, breaking news, breaking news, Brutus has been refused permission by the court to leave Guyana. And because the state is claiming through the Attorney General's chambers that he has 240 pending criminal charges in relation to financial crimes. I want you to consider this is a senior police officer, assistant commissioner. He was performing the functions of deputy commissioner administration, right? The man who actually basically controls the poor string of the police. And the allegation was made. We're going to repeat some of those things. I see some new faces in the schoolyard and in the class. We're going to repeat some of those things. But they re it was revealed this morning that 240, there are 240 pending charges against a police, a senior police officer. And they're telling me, Gail Teixeira told us not so long ago, how public confidence has increased in the police force and how um, the crime rate has done. And let me tell you this, before I bring in Mr. Conway, that 240, they are pending charges if, if and when, I don't care, shouldn't say when, if those charges are filed, they are not going to be considered a serious crime according to the police, um, the way the police count serious crimes. Those 240, those are not listed in the 11 categories. That category of crime is not listed. I want you to consider this. This is a senior police officer. And as I said before, calm is a bitch. I'm going to tell you why I say that. And you know, you I know they have a lot of Christians here on the um, live. And I'm going to say some things that might offend you all. But let me apologize before. Because, you know, they say you must forgive and forget. Certain things you can't forgive and you can't forget. Wickedness, wickedness shall never prosper. Wickedness shall never prosper. And the comments that I've been getting, I'm going to reveal them later. The thing about the lives and the careers that are alleged to have been destroyed by this current I command is with Brutus and them. Destroy a lot of people's career. Pressure, they have to run out of the work. Pressure. Uh, look, the, the wickedness can't prosper. Wickedness cannot prosper. And as I said, I'm going to outline why I am saying so in great detail. That is the man that I wanted promoted to assistant commissioner back in 2020. And when I told the president that he has pending this very matter, they came after me viciously. They came after me with trumped up charges. The same thing. That say complain now was so cool. I can dissect the whole thing. They came after me with trumped up charges. Charge the, the char me, Mr. Conway, other um retired and serving police officers. The charge was the well charge, one charge of conspiracy to commit fraud, where we were asked by the commissioner to assist in the revision of the police standing order. And then they decided they're gonna pay us a stipend. And then they conspired to say that the payment of that stipend was a conspiracy to commit fraud. We ended up in front of court. Run, run, run all over the place. Expenses. When I travel in on the 13th of October 2021 to attend court on the 15th, there they are in the court compound. Ramana and other ranks of Soku to arrest me for the same charge that I'm appearing for. You think it's ordinary wicked, the wicked? You think it's ordinary wicked? So you're gonna things are gonna be revealed now. All of a sudden, Brutus know about tainted investigation and Soku not being professional. They know that now. They didn't know that when they were they, many people. I see some of the people on the on the live here too. Charge, trumped up charge. I see someone on the li on the live here with one week to um, retirement. He gave some order that um, the officer must report to his office immediately, bypassing the commander. And when the officer did not re, um, report, he transferred her 
to, to um, some other location with one week before retirement, one week, that is wickedness, it, that is tremendous wickedness, transfer. And the officer did what any good police would do. She went into the wicked. In case you all know what we mean by that, she reported sick. Let me bring in Mr. Conway. Mr. Conway, let, let, me, let me hear you on this 240 pending charges, man, before we go into the other stuff. Well, we, we first thing I must say that happy to be in the land of the living to do god's work and um wickedness don't 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 last forever you know this is the man or let me say let me say this is the person who that wanted us to promote the police service commission and because we didn't promote him they they they, they charge us drag or be drag us before they did the court on one bogus charge bring 26 witnesses and 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 then at the end of the day, Matthew said they don't have a I I of evidence to 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 to, to, to con convict us. You know that, that is the person where who, who they, they 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 really had wanted to 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 promote. But as I say, karma is a bitch, and the amount of lives, young police lives, other policemen lives that 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 you know that were affected through the, the action of, 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 of that person, through the action of, 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 of that person, you know, wickedness, wickedness in high places, it can't work all the time. And God don't sleep, God don't wear pajamas. Yeah, as you said, you all don't get pajamas. There, there is a God. And them wickedness, when they're all in Bible and going and swearing and telling a lot of lies, not, many of them, more to fall, you know, more to fall, the wickedness that they did, more to fall. Move your vehicle. In front of me. Hey, join me, Trump. Stop by here. Move your vehicle. 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 Thank you. Listen, if you believe that the police has been unfair to you, the that place that you unfair can go to, to the police make been a complaint. This car it comes a, in front right? of me. So what this you gonna do for me? Yeah, here. just turn around your vehicle and continue your journey. You're listening to me now. Yeah, listen. If you believe the police is doing this job, no, around, you're listening to what find I'm yourself to one of the complaints that I can make allegation. I, I am Corporal Brown. Move your vehicle this time. Brown, if not, I will arrest you. No, I just won't move. Just won't come Move your vehicle, please, sir. Thank you. But you're not crossing the bridge. The law will not stoop to you. It don't bow to me, it won't bow to you. Move your vehicle. Move the vehicle, man. Go complaints tomorrow or something. Make whatever report you gotta make. But move your vehicle. Move the vehicle. Driver, this, this time, at this time, I'm telling for you. Is this your vehicle? Are you hitting? If not, I will arrest you. Just move your vehicle, please. Listen to me. Just move your vehicle, please. Just please move. Please move your vehicle, sir. Please move your vehicle. Please move your vehicle. Oh, everybody, that's not reasonable. Just move your vehicle. This is not your vehicle. They don't hit. Kindly move your vehicle, please.
going along the river. Okay. I don't cross young lady. Like I said, that's good. I hope I hope the V that you have, you hope you benefit off it. Thank you. Move your vehicle, driver. Turn your vehicle. Turn. 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 Walk the N or the or fire too. Come, turn. Turn. Go. Now you look at the young lady, show me a middle finger. Look at her. Yeah, when you were cursing me just now. Look at her. And when you were cursing me just now, then what? Two men were taken into police custody following an exchange of gunshots with the police this morning in Danvers Street Kitty. The shooting reportedly stemmed from the theft of an XR motorcycle. The motorcycle has a tracking device and the police traced the location. While the police were at the house and attempting to gain access to the bottom flat, gunshots rang out. Neighbors recounted the incident. The police come and ask. Um, you say you're dead between one, two yards. Yeah. Yeah. You buy the um, truck on it, so but he tracked the truck into this location. But he got on the passageway, and when he got on the passageway, he was downstairs at the back. They um, go and they lock up in there, he knocking, then coming out. You see him break down the door, and as soon as he opened the door, shot fire, and the police shot, start shooting back. I can't really tell you too much that I know I went. And the police come and ask, said they are tracking for some bike. I tell them I don't know because no bike is there. The um, every bike at the club or you know, different time. I can't really tell if I is here or when I hear a bike. I understand. So they go downstairs and they was checking for the bike. And then I hear ba 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 and that was it. I know what's happened. But they come and address themselves as police. And I was ba 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 Then I, then I shot the police. When the police said, shot being fired, shot being fired, back up, back up. Then I said, oh, like, the guy shoot out. I was on the phone. The police recovered a Glock, an air gun, and a stolen motorcycle. While the men were being escorted to the police vehicle, one of the bandits shouted. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't kill me, no Some of the windows of the house were shattered and bullet holes were seen on one of the windows. Residents said they were forced to lie low for a couple of minutes. When the gunshots ended, many of them ventured outside to get a better view of what transpired. The police recovered several spent shells at the scene. The Businessman Amir Ahmad has called for a retraction and apologies from US-based Guyanese Rickford Burke on claims of defamation. Ahmad, through his lawyer, claims that statements made by Burke on his Facebook post suggesting that the US Treasury Department is investigating the said Ahmad are false. Further, the businessman is claiming through his lawyer that the post made by Burke has caused him reputational damage for which he reserves his right to initiate legal proceedings and also entitled to compensation. The Caribbean Diana Institute for Democracy of which Burke is head in response said, CGID has noted false media reports that attorneys for Amir Ahmad, CEO of Sheriff Security, served a lawyer's letter on CGID President Mr. Rickford Burke. I wish to confirm that no such letter was served on Mr. Burke. Eight butterfly, sea moss powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder? Essential multivitamin powder made just for you. They indeed got problems with this question about household. We are going to be given, as I suggested on Thursday morning on Cam's TV, a hundred thousand dollars to Guyanese residents, Guyanese adult Guyanese residents. That is easier because, first of all. Here's the advantages of doing that. One, 
you got a problem you don't have to have a problem anymore about defining households because a lot of people think a house is a household is that true a house is not a household and you don't go around and say well look i passed the house and so on or I, I finished with the house you might finish with the house but you don't you have not finished with the household how lying kathy uses she presents this veneer of sophistication and and that she did all of this work zero work she still she still has not answered why she refused after the the bill was passed to liberalize telecommunication in tw and they promised the liberalization of tele telecommunication in their manifesto why she didn't sign the order